Greetings, Clarephiles and Clarephilettes. It's been quite a while since we've done a video, and uh, I feel like I should be standing up for you before you're reading some kind of essay here. I got my notebook reading you know, what I did on my summer vacation, but of course it's not summer. It's but I could say what I did on my spring vacation because that's about as long as we've been not producing videos of any kind, uh, educational or otherwise, about three months. Uh, but that is is going to change very soon because in the three months that we were off the YouTube lines or whatever, uh, we were doing other stuff. And I'm here to report to you what that was. So I guess I am kind of giving you what I did on my spring vacation, my extended spring vacation. Uh, and uh, we consider it really good news, and I hope you'll consider it really good news as well. First of all, we'll have to say that we all know that the COVID situation uh, over the past two years now has really uh, hurt production and uh, just your ability to get the product that you wanted, whether you were a customer or whether you were a person that was receiving direct supplies like we do, um, and then, of course, this, uh, the supplies are of my own design, and, and so I do the finishing here at the shop, but, you know, I can't finish what uh, I can't receive. So that's been really difficult. But what we did in this time, in this period of time, is we worked really hard on shoring up every flaw and every um, problem uh, that we could perceive on our instruments. And I'll have to say, I'm personally, as a clarinetist, as just speaking as a clarinetist, I'm kind of knocked out at the results. We've remained committed to hard rubber as being superior in every way to wood clarinets. And uh, for instance, our 576 now, I compared uh, to the Opus B flat clarinet that I have, that's one of the best Opus B flats I know of. It comes from the 62,000 vintage, which is, I think, there were about three vintages of the Opus, and that was the best one. And honest to goodness, this 576 just played so much better than the Opus. More even, with a better upper register, smoother. I wouldn't say it's not smoother over the middle break, but it's certainly smoother up into the third register. Uh, and the tuning is better. The tune is actually better. And that's because the, the 576 is not a direct copy of the Opus, but it's an improvement over the designs of the Opus uh, that I did after I left LeBlanc. And so uh, this instrument really knocks me out now. <clears throat> you know, and besides finding an individual instrument that may play better than another individual instrument of another brand, the beauty of hard rubber is the consistency, is that it's one horn after another displays fantastically well. The key work has been significantly reworked and improved. Uh, the key finishing has been significantly reworked and improved. And I've gone through the acoustics of the clarinet with a fine tooth comb, and boy, does it play well and play well in tune. So we're really excited about the improvements that we've made in the production. But there's a lot more. There's really a lot more. We've been had trouble getting supplies of the C clarinet, and we've had trouble getting supplies of the A clarinet for two years, no, more than two years. Um, and uh, we've been frustrated at every end because um, promises have not been fulfilled, and just it's very frustrating. Uh, but we finally found a supplier and a really excellent company to produce our C and A clarinet. And we're really excited about being able to offer this to you. And really, you know, what should be exciting for you if you're in need of a good C clarinet, a great C clarinet actually, and a great A clarinet, uh, is that we're not going to be, we're not going to have to raise our prices. It's not going to it's not going to cost us more, and when it doesn't cost us more, it doesn't cost you more. Um, so that's really, ex really exciting news. 
um, and you should see these clarinets. In fact, I took some photographs so you can see them. Uh, first of all, the A clarinet. Uh, when I played the A clarinet, I tested the scale, and it was as good as, as any A clarinet as I've ever played. And it plays so smoothly and so evenly. And I tested it in blindfold test against my Opus A clarinet. And uh, every time the person hearing it picked this new clarinet, uh, this new A clarinet. So um, again, uh, my acoustical designs, they worked them out great and they made it with a beautiful first class mechanism. And this mechanism, I deem it really better than the LeBlanc mechanism of the Opus and the Concerto clarinets. I'd say it's the equal of the best mechanisms I've seen coming from Europe, and the keys are silver plated. And they, they're plated in a way that they won't tarnish. And of course, the clarinets are made from pure, natural, hard rubber. And that means, and what does that mean? That means that they're going to play consistently from year to year, from season to season. They're not going to crack. You're not going to have to worry about the binding of joints in, in the summer when the wood swells. So you're not going to have to worry about loose rings and cracking stuff when you get into the winter and the dry seasons. Uh, this, uh, this material is really fantastic. And I think its superiority is basically tied up with the fact of that you have the same, uh, I mean, exactly the self-same density of material from right hand to left hand. When the manufacturers make the wood clarinets, they buy the billets. And of course, they season the billets, they speed season them, uh, some uh, speed season them. And then when they, they build the clarinets, uh, one joint, upper joint can come from one piece of wood and come and the other from another piece of wood with different densities and of course different things in the manu different uh, effects from the processing and the manufacturing and I, besides the variabilities of manufacturing and kind of endemic to wood clarinet making that make the clarinets inconsistent uh, there's a uh, there's something with uh, the way the wood responds, I think. And all those things, you know, it compounded, you end up with very inconsistent clarinets, not just one to another. And that's empirically a fact. Everyone knows that the clarinets are very inconsistent and they play very differently one to another. But you also end up with inconsistency, inconsistency within the clarinet itself because of various things in manufacturing <clears throat> not the least of which is the different densities of the left hand and right hand coming from different parts of the wood and and so on and so forth. Some of that's just speculation, but uh, I know the results are a fact. Exactly what the causes are, I, I can't really completely tell you. Nevertheless, I think you've been seeing uh, 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 some photographs from the A clarinet and C clarinet, uh, they're really beautiful clarinets, and the mechanisms work really super well. They're tight and super quiet, as tight and quiet as any clarinets that I know of, uh, made by anybody anywhere on any continent. And so uh, this is kind of a dream come true for me because <clears throat> I know that my acoustics are really excellent, that they're just top-notch. And I think it's only fitting that we can get these models made with a mechanism that is actually uh, concomitant, fitting, um, which is also excellent, as is excellent as the acoustics is. So now this is a reality, it's a dream come true. And not only is it like a pipe dream, like, oh, well, we'll soon have these models. Right now we have the C clarinets and A clarinets in stock. And besides that, Ted, <clears throat> Ted wanted me to mention, excuse me, I've had allergies that are really making me <clears throat> crazy lose my voice. Ted wanted me to mention to you all that we also had the final prototypes of the A and C that were approved. I uh, don't think they have logo stamps on them. They just have markings that they were the final prototypes. But the, the production that we've received is as such that we're perfectly happy to sell those at a discounted rate. Um, that's the good news. 
the bad news is there's only one of each. So if you really want a great C clarinet or a great A clarinet, we got we got them well in our new production models. But also, if you get there and call Ted and you really want those one of those prototypes and save yourself several hundred dollars, uh, then um, and the only difference, by the way, would just be the logos won't be on, but it'll, but we'll make that compromise. Uh, just call Ted uh, anyway. And let's see, I've got my notes here from my summer vacation or my spring vacation. Let me see what else I've got here. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. You know, uh, we do plan to do more educational movies and uh, try to do... And by the way, if you have questions about the clarinet and you want to learn more about the clarinet, then just, you know, drop me a line. Uh, just uh, send Ted a, a message and he'll relay it on to me. And if there's a subject that I can answer and, and help anyone, I'll be happy to put up a YouTube. Uh, because generally, if one of you has a question about something, everybody has the same question. Um, and you know it never hurts. It never hurts to hear, uh, you know, correct answers to to sincere good questions. So uh, anyway, so drop me a line if you want to know more about mouthpieces or barrels or mouthpieces or, uh, or, or sorry or acoustics or any number of things uh, related to the clarinet and reed finishing and so on and so forth. I'm always looking forward to hearing your comments and hearing your questions and trying to respond to them, either individually down where the comments are written or um, respond to them in another video. I have one video planned coming up, uh, again, about Harold Wright and about uh, tone production, uh, but uh, I'm not going to discuss that now. I just want to conclude by saying one of the things that we've doggedly tried to do, and we Tried to, and we've been trying to do it throughout this COVID thing, and that is to stay in operation because we are committed to building the very best clarinets we can possibly build and um, build them at a price almost anyone can afford. And we also have, again, our program where um, you can have no interest payments, uh, that are suitable for you and um, to make it easier to have the clarinet that you want. Uh, I've always felt, you know, when I worked in the industry, worked at LeBlanc and I saw a lot of stuff going on, I just thought that so much of the prices of clarinets are not really related to the instrument at all, but to some other factors like paying retirement for retired workers. Um, uh, or other things, you know, kind of socialist plans that uh, really pick your pocket, but they do nothing to improve the clarinet at all. It's just something of a social circumstance um, that is not something you agree to. Um, you know, you shouldn't have to pay for somebody's retirement uh, hidden in the price of the clarinet. And yet, that's Unfortunately, that's what is going on in, in many, many cases. You know, you, you may not know it or not, but the clarinet prices have increased over almost anything you can name. Clarinet prices have increased since 1980 to right now more than the prices of cars. They've increased more than the prices of homes. They've increased, they're almost equal uh, with the increase in college tuitions and people getting higher education. I, I, they may actually uh, exceed them. I should ask Ted about that to look it up precisely because uh, this guy can find numbers. I've never seen anybody can find numbers like this and compare things in, obje in objective senses like that. Well, but anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. But we've done everything we could to keep our prices, prices very, very low. Um, in fact, we are developing uh, our Libertas model to match the A clarinet. And by the way, I played the 576 and the A clarinet, and they match really well together. The blowing resistance is better matched than any set of buffets that I ever owned 
or LeBlancs that I ever owned when um, back when I was playing professionally. So, uh, uh, but anyway, we're developing a B flat that's going to have the silver plating that we'll be able to sell as a match set. And get this, we'll be able to sell that match set, B flat and A, silver plated with a deluxe case. And I think you saw the deluxe case there. Are, if I did, I'll show it right now if 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 it didn't pop it up in in the other uh, in the other photographs that uh, you were shown here. Uh, this uh, this case is going to be a beautiful deluxe case, but get back to the point. I'm sorry, it's really hard. It's really late in the day, and I'm really tired. But uh, so I'm just struggling through with this. But uh, we're going to be able to sell that match set at less, both clarinets at less than the price of the Opus was in. 1993 and that's our commitment to you and we've really worked hard to keep our expenses as low as possible we worked in different difficult circumstances rather than rent offices that would be convenient for us because we didn't want to raise the prices for you and this has been my commitment ever since really I left LeBlanc that I wanted to give this and do this for the clarinet community. And I know many people have made fun of me for uh, uh, persisting in making hard rubber clarinets. And uh, I, I, I really don't care. If I didn't feel hard rubber clarinets um, were not superior to wood, then I would make clarinets in wood. But, and I had, off, had offers to do that, but I have no interest in doing that because you get the better clarinets, the better playing clarinets, the better tuning clarinets, the better sounding clarinets, and the most durable and most consistent playing clarinets when you make them, and you make them well with top-notch professional acoustics in hard rubber. Okay, you know, I'm not gonna redo this. Uh, it's, uh, like I said, it's late in the day and I'm really tired, but I needed to get this message out to you and I wanna thank you for for listening to it. I'm just speaking to you heart to heart. We've got some wonderful A and B flat clarinets and um, C clarinets and they're really, it's to, for me it's a dream come true because I thought how can I ever get these manufacturers to bring the standards of the mechanics up to the acoustics that I know these are proven acoustics. Uh, and uh, it's happening now. So um, if you decide to order one of these, I think you're going to re really be knocked out at it. It's going to, you know, these, these clarinets just play great. And uh, they're all of my acoustical design. And I'm pleased the way it, it turned out. So we really struggled along, especially in that last three months, uh, trying to get all this done and get it all approved. But it's here now. It's not a pipe dream, and it's all waiting for you. And uh, if you really want a great A clarinet right now, if you want a great C clarinet, we'll do anything we can to make it possible for you to do that. And uh, beyond that, and also don't forget to ask Ted about those two prototypes because they play just as well as, as the, the final production. In fact, the final production was based on their approval. So thank you very much, and we'll be presenting some more stuff, not commercial stuff, but stuff to benefit you as a clarinetist, we hope. And please uh, send in your, your questions and comments and stuff like that, because uh, they help us, because this is what we're doing, and we're doing it for you. So thank you very much, and good clarinetting.